This is my new used 2016 Trail Premium Toyota 4Runner. So this is gonna be my review. I've only had this vehicle now for, I wanna say a, a about a month. I absolutely love it right off the bat. But let me get down to it. Let me tell you exactly what I bought and what is in this vehicle. I know you're not supposed to buy a modded vehicle. I got this at the low end of MSRP and it has at least, at least $30,000 worth of upgrades on this bad boy. It's just way too good of a deal to pass up. Now I did make sure to look at everything and research what was in this vehicle. So one of the previous owners was part of the Overland Bound community. If you haven't been with us before, I'm Michael. I'm Corey. And we have a, a worldwide community, adventure community called Overland Bound. They're here yep. to help you guys. Yep. Yeah. And all of those, all of our members, all those people, we talk to them all the time. I'd love to get a hold of this person so I could talk to him about what they've done with this vehicle. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. I have a CBI front and a CBI back steel bumper with the dual swing outs. On these dual swing outs, it also has dual tables. This is where I'm gonna be cooking my food. On the front bumper here, inside the bumper here, I have a Warn Xeon Platinum 10S winch. And I, I forget what this cover is called. I think it's the Sidewinder cover, basically to protect the winch when you're out there. It's got the Rigid Industries 30 inch E-Series amber white uh, light bar there in the front. It's got the Gobi roof rack with the removable sunroof insert. There is a Rigid Industries 40 inch E-Series flood spot combo with smoked covers on it. It also has the Rigid Industry chase lights. They are white and red. Uh, along with the Gobi roof rack, it came with the ladder. Let's talk suspension. It's got the Icon Vehicle Dynamics suspension in it. In the front, it's got 2.5 extended travel coilovers with remote reservoirs and CD CV 700 pound springs to compensate for the weight of the steel bumpers. Billet control arms with delta joints. In the rear, it has 2.5 inch shocks with remote reservoir right there. It also has three inch overland springs and an adjustable track bar. The wheels are VTX Rogue Rims with 34 inch Toyo Open Country mud tires. The previous owner did re-gear it since they did the lift and they put nitro gears at 4.88 and it's got a Haro front e-locker. I, I don't know. <laughs> it also has the ARB Safari snorkel on it and it also has an ARB differential breather. To be totally frank, I don't know what the last three things were. If you know what they were, please let me know down in the comments. Under the hood here, we have onboard ARB dual compressor. Got the Odyssey Group 31 battery. Uh, I am looking into a dual battery setup, though I might just do the external battery method. And also the S-Pod to make the wiring more efficient. I've got the touchscreen right here. All right, so I was told that it has an aftermarket radiator in here, and there is the winch down in there. Now, I did buy stuff already for this, and I'll, I'll do another video talking about everything that I did already to it, but what it did come with, let me get this open, it did come with the ARB drawer system with roller floors and the Dometic CFX 75 dual zone fridge freezer. I mean, that is a $1,500 fridge freezer combo. Also included in this vehicle was the Rago modular storage panels on the side here and that side. I added the fire extinguisher. Let's go to the interior really quick. Very beautiful leather seats, just beautiful seating. I'm so comfortable compared to my last vehicle, my Mercedes, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, also it came with WeatherTech floor mats for the front and back. What else? It also came with the Rago Fabrication dash mount unit right here. I added that. Alpine Halo 9 head unit. I'm not a huge fan of this. It is nicer, obviously, than stock, but I'm just not a huge fan of it. 
since this is a 2016. I think this was the last year that they did the manual switch into four wheel drive. So that's one of the big reasons I got this year. And then looking up here, got all the knobbies. Also, this is the sunroof version, but I don't know. I don't think I'm ever gonna do a rooftop tent. I think I am going to remove the back seats and make this a trailer, I mean a uh, camper. All right, so how do I feel about this vehicle after having it for about 700 miles in about a month? I love it. I absolutely love this vehicle. Coming from a low riding vehicle, one that I can't even go on a dirt road on, to this raised, heavy, badass truck is a fantastic feeling, I gotta say. I'm looking down on everybody now when I'm driving around. I love that, that is super nice. I feel like I could run over anything and be okay. Yeah, look Magellan, we're at the sprinkle here. <laughs> You know, when you drive a small sedan, you really feel like conscious around giant vehicles. And all the vehicles these days are just giant trucks and vans and shoot, SUVs. There's just so many giant vehicles out there now. Why did I get the 4Runner? Multiple reasons, uh, reliability, number one. I was searching for a truck for no joke, two and a half years. I don't have a vehicle that I could carry my bike to trails at with. So everything I do has to be within 30 miles of my house. Here we are. I still need to get a bike rack. But why did I buy this vehicle? Not only reliability, I wanted something where I wouldn't be limited where I could go. I also wanted something that I could work on myself. On the Mercedes, I did nothing to it. Like I didn't know how to work on it. I'd never touched it, never changed the oil, nothing. I had a Camaro before that, and I used to change my brakes and and oil, but that is the extent of my uh, my auto mechanic ability. I got this vehicle because it's one that people work on themselves all the time. You go on YouTube, there are tons of videos telling you how to make all the repairs you may need to make. And that is gonna be so much fun. This vehicle has 105,000 miles on it. I figure I'm gonna have to do a service very soon. Get some help. I'm not doing it. I'm gonna take it to some professionals and I am gonna get the work's done, but after that, I'm gonna start doing everything. My oil changes, if I need to change a belt on anything, if I need to change the shocks, everything. I'm gonna do everything myself. That's the plan, at least, I hope. I wanna start doing more things with my hands, get out there more. So I wanna be able to repair this vehicle if I break down when I'm in the middle of nowhere. Another reason I got this is because I wanted an overlanding vehicle. Now I was looking at van life and looking at a ProMaster and all that for the longest time, but those can get stuck, man. Those things do not have four wheel drive. I do not trust it. I'm not gonna spend $100,000 on a Sprinter van. That's just crazy. I'm sorry, but I'm not getting another Mercedes ever, ever. Whoa, calm down, whoa, Jamal. Whoa, whoa. Don't pull out the nine. <laughs> yes, the Mercedes-Benz C230 compressor was a great car. I had it for 14, 15 years almost. Almost 15 years with my last vehicle. I couldn't work on the Mercedes-Benz and any repair on that thing was ridiculous expensive. So I am looking forward to a more cost-effective vehicle where parts for this vehicle are so easy to find. So what are some of the cons? It was advertised 17 to 21 miles per gallon. I'm getting 12 to 13 miles per gallon. All right, ouch, right? But I put 87 in this. Are you kidding me? I don't need that 91 like my Mercedes needed. Oh, no more 91 gas, all 87. Some other cons. Besides gas mileage? Okay, here's some cons with this particular vehicle. The Dometic fridge, horrible. It's so giant. I do not need that much fridge. Getting rid of it. The shelf system, I mean the drawer system back there absolutely terrible. All the like the rollers and like the frame itself, it takes up so much room. The drawers themselves take up so much room. So if I wanted to actually convert here, like lower the seats and actually like make this a, a camper, I mean, I'm going to be starting sleeping at this level. So I'm going to have like two feet. Me sleeping on my side is like the full height of that. So, you know, <laughs> That's gotta change. But I wanna, I wanna be able to park anywhere and kind of stealth camp in this vehicle. Other cons. I mean, other than gas mileage, I don't think there are any cons, any real cons. Every single review I've ever watched, and I've watched hundreds of videos about off-roading vehicles, about overlanding vehicles, 
about camper camping, like good camping vehicles. And the Forerunner was always number one. I've never been a car guy, okay? But in these past two and a half years, I've really been studying about vehicles and what I want. And this vehicle is probably gonna last me for the rest of my life. I'm just gonna take good care of it. I would not be surprised if I could get 500 plus thousand miles on this engine. That's my review. My review is totally amazing. Uh, I was a total idiot for buying a vehicle that was modded out, but I did my research. And I saw that the shocks that they put in here, the, the rims, the lift, they regeared it. They did almost everything you need to do. Oh, also the 2016 Trail Premium has KDSS, which a lot of people don't like, but it makes for a very smooth ride. There is one modification I need to do for my KDSS system. Once I do that, everything is good. Well, yeah, I'm looking forward to the future in this vehicle. Get ready, guys. More content coming your way. I forgot to mention a couple things that I do really love about the Forerunner, and especially, uh, you know, 2024 and earlier Forerunners. They're made in Japan. So, like, all the plastic and rubber and everything in this vehicle, it's super high quality. It feels nice. Like, you don't... There, there's no plastic that feels cheap, like you're gonna break it all of a sudden. Uh, so that is one really, really nice thing about this vehicle. Anyways, I forgot to say that, so I figured I'd say it now. Thanks for hanging with Zayden. Peace.